We are visiting today a 35 meter all aluminium motor yacht that was built in 1988 in Holland by Porcius Yachts. She has four cabins for eight guests and accommodation for six crew members. Now, this boat hasn't been in uh, use for the past one and a half years. The owners are motivated to sell her. She is sold as she is here on the land. Uh, basically, she can be quite quickly operational, but she will need a refit in order to bring her back to her glory days. I will point out during the detailed walkthrough um, all the things or most of the things that I think that needs to be corrected. Um, now, this video is going to be quite long, so if you want to skip from one part of the video to another, use the chapters at the video description below. You will also find at the video description below the link, a link to the yacht page and by clicking it you will see photos, specification list and additional information. Uh, if you find out that some areas are darker in the video, uh, then I, I, put a vi I put photos in the web page uh, using a flash in my camera so you can see it uh, quite clearly. So let's start. So we are starting the video here from uh, underneath the boat, which is on the land. It's a good chance to see the underwater uh, lines of the boat. There is a big hydraulic bow thruster just here. The hull is a planning hull, uh, as I mentioned in the intro. The boat is equipped with 2,600 horsepower main engines from MTU powerful engines which brings her into a uh, full planning. Uh, stabilizers, fin stabilizers from Vosper. At the moment the boat uh, is not clean. She still has a little bit of barnacles from her last haul out. You can see the intake of uh, seawater of uh, the engines and generators here and the shape of the hull. Let's turn the camera. And there is uh, some keel here which enhance the stability of the boat. Two propellers. This is the starboard. And here is the port side. The hull condition visually looks uh, pretty well. Uh, there is a little bit of, uh, I mean, the filler on the, on the hull will need to be renewed in some places, but except that I don't see any major damage. Now from here you can see the hydraulic uh, water platform, which also can be used to launch the dinghy. I'm not sure that if this dinghy is part of the sail, uh, anyway, quite a massive uh, construction for the uh, water platform. Let's have a quick look from behind. <clears throat> yeah, and then again the shape of the hull just from the looking forward at the same line with the keel. So we are going to step up and I'm going to meet you in a second up on the main deck. So we continue our uh, tour here from the foredeck. <clears throat> we can see uh, the shape of the superstructure. It's all aluminum uh, looking astern. And let's a little bit dive into the details. There is a huge uh, windlass here which operates two chains. I didn't mention it when we were down, but uh, the, the anchors actually has pockets inside the hull, so they completely disappear. Uh, you can watch the beginning of the video, probably you can notice that. Looking forward, and this is the, here we can see some details about the construction, which looks very healthy. Uh, there is a little bit of damage here with fillers and underneath you can see clear aluminium. Damages on the fair leads. I'm not sure why it was caused this side, port side and the same at the other side. 
Tick decks will have to be completely removed and renewed. This is the worst uh, situation, but even in places where it looks better, actually the uh, tick decks are no longer attached to the hull, so they will have to be removed, the deck will have to be cleaned, and uh, a new tick deck has to be laid down. Um, now let's have a quick snap into this chain locker. You can see clearly the chains and a few more other things which are located here is uh, two water makers, uh, large water makers and the hydraulic uh, power uh, station for the windlass just in front of the camera. Okay, so let's move astern. Slowly we can see the windows. Uh, most of them are in pretty reasonable condition, uh, but they will need to be controlled all through. Uh, this door, which is electrical door, which we don't have electrical now, is leading us to the galley and to the crew area. The crew area is under the bow. We are going to visit it also as we go inside. And we are making our way astern. Quick look at the ceiling here on the sidewalks. And then again, this massive construction. And there is a boarding gate for a long side mooring here. And I think there is another one uh, on the stern. This door is locked, but this is another entrance to the engine room, another side boarding gate here. And here we are in the aft deck. It doesn't look very inviting now, but you can understand the potential. It's quite large. The beam of the boat is about 7.40 meter. So you have nice beam here. And in here you have a great seating area, which is now full with fenders but it is here, as well as um, a wet bar underneath here, it is covered, and there are doors which are protecting this area when you cruise. Bear in mind, this is a fast boat, it can reach 30 knots. And we are turning the camera and we will go uh, without any further delay inside to use the sunlight I hope uh, the light inside will be enough. So, this is the salon. The light is not too bad. Windows are very large and they are quite low, so you have quite a nice uh, natural light coming inside the boat. And we are moving inside. And as you can see, there are different seating arrangements all around coffee table and this round large table can be used as a dining table but uh, then again it might be that the new owner might during uh, a refit consider to change the uh, the arrangement here large tv from samsung on the wall it's a modern tv and Let's go to the entrance to the corridor, turn the camera and have another look at this salon from a different angle. Okay, now here we are, there is a long uh, corridor here on the starboard side. First thing we see is the switches, a lot of uh, electrical switchboards all marked in English, and safety uh, plan. Now, the, the floor here is kind of uh, furnished with wood, with solid wood, which looks in pretty nice condition. And here on my left side, there is a day head. Um, I'm not sure about the light in here, but it's pretty a spacious day head <clears throat> from here we will walk forward 
here there is another door leading you outside and it is just in front of the closed pilot house which we will visit soon and here on my left side there are stairs leading to the uh, four cabins which this boat allows and offers moving forward and let's see there is kind of a forward salon or lounge which is pretty nice it has a great view forward and beautiful sitting area in here this is a place that a new owner might consider to put another cabin here uh, though it's an amazing place uh, by itself a lot of storage uh, spaces underneath all around the interior doesn't I mean looks pretty much in I would say reasonable condition there are some defects like this and obviously will need to be corrected uh, but also you can see that most of the condition is like that and one might consider to keep it and just uh, repaint it or recover uh, it okay we are moving back and I turn slightly and we are turning into the galley it's quite a large galley and equipped with a much modern equipment uh, than the age of the boat which is 1988 as I mentioned large round working surface a lot of storage around the the surface is from uh, stainless steel it's one piece together with a sink and behind me there is an island table with a huge uh, induction stove from Siemens with six stations on the other side another working surface and there is a loose fridge here which belongs somewhere not sure where and here there is a pantry for the crew that they can rest and have a bite and then again it's all uh, furnished with very large windows this window can be opened slide out I'm not going to try to do it now but you can imagine it can uh, provide quite a lot of fresh air inside and then there is a separation door here to the crew area which is downstairs there we are going to visit it just now and a door here to the port side which the crew can go around and serve the guest on the aft deck from here okay we are going to dive quickly downstairs here to see the crew accommodation it doesn't have enough light uh, to ideal presentation but still you can see the layout so there are two uh, toilets uh, combined with shower and a sink toilet is just here another one is here same arrangement quite identical with sink and behind the door um, <clears throat> you can take a shower now uh, the camera is now turning straight forward and you can su see the two crew cabins uh, each one of them with two banks which are reasonable in size for the crew captain's cabin is here to the port side with a wider bed a little bit of a dressing area and yeah there is another crew area uh, on the stern we will visit it later there is a uh, here in the corridor a uh, laundry area uh, has been placed laundry machine and a dryer for Mille we are making our way up back to the main deck back to the galley again it is separated by this door probably to 
avoid the cooking smells from the crew area. Another quick look at the galley. And we will go back to the starboard corridor. And before we explore the guest cabins, which are down this stairway, we will go up five stairs and we will check the pilot house and the flybridge. <clears throat> so it's a um, it's quite a big pilot house. It allows good visibility all around. There are tons of equipment here. Uh, most of it, I guess, is quite uh, not updated. Uh, old SSB radios, old radar. Um, I guess some of it is not uh, functioning anymore or uh, not in use nowadays. Um, on the other hand, there are many uh, parts of equipment which should be functioned, like uh, the VHF from ICOM, some machines from Raymarine, which I'm pretty sure that has been added later. This one, some indicators from BNG. Um, the boat is equipped with the Vosper stabilizers. Here are the control for that. I'm not going to detail all the different equipment here, but this is just a general look to give you an idea. A very large screen from Raymarine, might be 20 inch, might, maybe more, not sure. Another uh, radio that should be a, that should be another SSB radio. Um, yeah, and then behind me there is a big uh, sitting place, very pleasant to spend time while you're cruising with a table. Uh, this table can be used as a chow table as well. And as you can see, there is a lot of uh, documentation of the boat, uh, the main engines, uh, some drawings of the boat, additional equipment. So a lot of it. Uh, has been preserved here in the boat, which is very important. Okay, we are climbing another six stairs and we are in the flybridge, which is now all covered with the canvas all around. There is a hardtop above us. And all kinds of sitting arrangements. Now it's full with cushions which are uh, in reasonable condition and uh, which belongs to many parts of the boat, probably the aft deck and the fore deck. And this is the helm station, uh, the outside helm station. Uh, sure, when you are navigating, all this uh, canvas around is uh, removed and then you have open visibility all around. Now, uh, the thick condition in this level seems to be in uh, good condition. It needs cleaning and sanding, maybe even not sanding, maybe just a little bit of scrubbing, but it looks nice. Uh, there are places here, sunbathing area, here and here, and let's turn the camera and sitting arrangements with tables that can be extended in both sides. And let's have a snap look to the stern. There is additional piece of uh, deck behind, just here. And from here, we can actually uh, have a quick look down to the aft deck. And there is another uh, deck down there below, which is the swimming deck. And we will visit it. Uh, further down this video okay facing the camera forward we are making our way back through the flybridge and we will go to explore the guest accommodation going inside back to the pilot house
turning forward left and immediately turning down to the guest accommodation so it's quite a sharp uh, stairway probably about. okay so let's try to understand first the layout here here facing forward there are two uh, guest cabins with twin beds one here and the other one is here we will visit them soon and just behind me there is a watertight door this door for safety and short corridor and here on the port side which is on my right another uh, twin bed cabin so all in all there are three twin beds cabin uh, on board and one master cabin each one of the cabin has its uh, own en suite and this is how it looks sink and toilet and round shower which I'm not sure you can see and we are stepping out of this uh, twin cabin and moving into the master cabin and luckily this cabin has much more light has natural light from the four windows that it has it's a full beam master cabin very spacious the fact that this boat has only four cabin in compared to five cabin makes each one of the cabin very spacious so seating area here and a dressing corner down here and there are two very large walk-in wardrobes one of them is here with hanging arrangement it's very deep the other one is on the other side now there is an ensuite here on the starboard side pretty large as well the condition of the cabin is quite well you don't see too much wear and tear inside the cabins on the lower deck two sinks toilet turning the camera we have a lot of uh, storage spaces in here for towels personal belongings and here there is a shower round shower okay we are going out from master cabin the floor condition looks in quite good condition there are some scratches but this can be uh, be corrected uh, by varnishing it but the wood itself looks like a solid wood and in very good condition so another uh, walk-in wardrobe the amount of space uh, for personal belongings here is enormous and uh, any future owner can spend time here have a lot of uh, personal belongings without any shortage samsung tv here on the starboard side facing the bed and we will move forward and let's check the last two twin cabins short we are passing this short corridor this is the cabin that we already saw watertight door one stair another small corridor and uh, let's start by looking at the port side twin cabin unfortunately the light is not amazing but yeah there is no electricity at the moment uh, there is no shore connection this uh, cabin has 
uh, ensuite, a sink and toilet, and behind the door, uh, again, this round shape, a uh, deep shower. And we will step out of this cabin and go to see the last cabin for today. Outside to the corridor and inside the last wing cabin. Um, in this side there is quite a lot of uh, natural light coming. Some uh, storage spaces above the right hand side uh, bed and additional storage space here very deep uh, hanging locker and here we can see the uh, the toilet and here they put two sinks slightly bigger than the other one the toilet is dismantled here, obviously it will need renewal and here there is a shower which is filled up with a uh, old um, toilet uh, equipment. Okay, so we are stepping out of the boat now and the last station for today will be the engine room uh, the service guy here arranged for us a little bit of uh, neon lights uh, so I hope we can see uh, quite a lot of details we are moving astern passing from the pilot house going back to the salon and moving astern Pretty nice space which is created between the salon and the aft deck which are all nearly at the same level. This, uh, this construction can be removed and have a huge open space if the new owner prefers. Some seating arrangement here. And the boat has a very long passerelle from Opakmar. I'm not going to step on it now, but basically it has uh, four telescopic parts, uh, so it's quite long and can reach a very far pontoon uh, over the water platform. <clears throat> Electrical capstans in both sides, one here and one there, and very large uh, bullards, uh, four in each side of the boat going down eight stairs here there is a place and a base for a big crane i'm not sure where this crane is if it is still existing and here we have a very large uh, water platform which has extension which the dinghy is now sitting on and this extension at the moment is not covered, but it can be covered with a teak deck and that will make a very large swimming area. Now, this is one of the entrances to additional crew area and technical area and further inside uh, the engine room. So let's step inside. It's a watertight door. It's a little bit messy here but I will try to explain what we see. So, um, yeah, there is a small uh, crew galley here with fridge and sink and stove. Here is the, the fridge and microwave and probably uh, some seating arrangement can be arranged here, uh, which there are a lot of boxes here or on the other side, there is another bank um, so someone can sleep here and there is a toilet and a wet shower and sink in here and further forward here on the starboard side there is a full size cabin uh, which can be used by the chief engineer or the technician 
it's quite comfortable it is isolated with a water tie door which probably isolates some of the noises so the engineer can be close to the engine room a lot of storage place with still with a lot of uh, technical uh, equipment and spare parts now uh, here are the stairs uh, to another en entrance to the engine room that's the one that I showed you on the port side now we are stepping inside the engine room uh, some electrical um, lights has been uh, improvised in here and uh, let's have a quick look first around it's a very well built engine room it has a, I would say commercial standards a lot of steel piping uh, everything is uh, bulletproof massive in the heart of this engine room there are two MTU engines uh, which each one each one of them has 2600 horsepower it's quite a powerful machine there are two generators here from northern lights this is the starboard uh, generator each one of them is with 50 kilowatts uh, power and that's the port side generator i opened one of the openings so you can have a snap look inside not much to see but they are look they look in pretty uh, well operational condition back there there is a huge compressor air compressor and the reason is that the engines are starting with a uh, pressed air not with electrical starter with pressed air and therefore you can see these two big uh, tanks uh, which are storing compressed air uh, here we can see some gouges of the engines analog gouges uh, which gives you all kinds of um, information gear oil pressure seawater pressure charging air pressure before the turbocharger after the turbocharger and so on and so forth and let's have a quick look at this musculate uh, engines it's uh, MTU engines uh, commercial level and actually they look in pretty good condition you don't see any major leaks here or um, or any evident of uh, exhaust which is running uh, the pipes looks pretty much healthy all kinds of uh, pipes and connections the same for the other engine uh, as I mentioned before massive manifolds everything is a commercial standard I would say even Navy standard um, uh, of construction uh, this is probably the day had a uh, fuel one of the question mark for me is the the fuel um, capacity of this boat I will try to find out and I will put it in the website let me remind you that if you you want to see more details about the boat you can visit her web page by using the link at the video description below this is the uh, hot water boiler I guess it's a, it's quite a huge one probably 150 or 200 liters uh, it will provide hot uh, water to the showers underneath here are the compressor of the air conditioning system and the whole system is down here below um, this is a hydraulic uh, system I'm not sure what which one it is serving uh, no not sure might be the might be the hydraulic water platform um, also the, the side boarding uh, uh, stairs might be also that um, now here is a, another big uh, hydraulic system which is related to the Vos for stabilizers the fin stabilizers uh, yeah so that's that's uh, that's the tour in the engine room let's have a quick look on uh, the starboard engine then again 
it looks pretty much in good condition and the fuel manifold which distributes uh, fuel from the various tanks uh, to the engine and to the generator <clears throat> yeah okay it's a pretty much robust engine room which looks in uh, operational condition uh, I wouldn't do big investments here I will just reserve uh, preserve what what has been initially uh, constructed in Holland so that was the 35 meter all aluminium motor yacht from Porcius a shipyard in Holland. She's now offered for sale as is. Owner is motivated. Uh, you can contact us uh, through the link at the video description below.